So this is a huge month for Spider-Man. New Amazing Spider-Man movie, New Amazing Spider-Man number one comic book, and of course, a New Amazing Spider-Man video game. That particular is going to be a loaded subject, as Spider-Man has had a very long and spotted history as a video game character. There have been highs, and there have been lows, and perhaps worst, averages is, is. Because if there's one thing that doesn't belong within 100 miles of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, it's average. Spectacular? Obviously. Amazing? Indubitably. Superior? That shit doesn't count. Shut up, man. That was Doc Ock. That's fucked up. Sorry. But average? New. As it's a loaded subject, it's gonna take a few videos to get through all of it. Three, to be exact. We're gonna start today with a brief history of Spider-Man as a video game character. Video two will be a two-minute review of the new Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game. And video three will kind of tie the whole thing up. So put on your most comfortable footy Spider-Man pajamas, sit back, relax, and prepare for the history of Spider-Man as a video game character. That's a terrible name. Who came up with that? I swear to fuck you're all fired. I'm going to die. brief history lesson on Spider-Man games, we're not going to start at the beginning. Stop a bobs and tie. We're going to start with the first truly brilliant Spider-Man game, which for the purposes of this video, we're going to call Spider-Man 2000. Not to discredit anything released prior, but as I've mentioned before, a superhero game hardly qualifies as a superhero game unless its primary goal is to make the player feel like that superhero. So while these side-scrolling titles were certainly entertaining for their time, they weren't groundbreaking, and in a comparison you'll be hearing a lot in this and coming videos, nothing as earth-shattering as Batman Arkham. Besides, the last game to be released before Spider-Man 2000 was Spider-Man Web of Fire for 32X. And if there wasn't already enough in that previous sentence to curdle your gamer milk, dig on this sweet soundtrack for a second. But in 2000, when Activision released their first Spider-Man title with the newly acquired license from Marvel, we were finally getting somewhere. Every licensed title up to that point had fallen somewhere on a scale between complete crap and not bad, but Spider-Man 2000 felt like a real video game. I mean, it was a real video game. A good video game. And it cast you as Spider-Man. I realize by modern standards this looks completely ridiculous, but for the time, it was a truly amazing feat. This was still a point in gaming history when utilizing 3D environments and a free-floating camera was a hit-or-miss process that missed more often than it hit. Not only did they manage to pull that off, but added to it a fun Spider-Man plot that ticked all the right boxes. Welcome, true believers and newcomers alike. Gratifying combat, web-swinging, wall-crawling, the whole shebang. Did I just say shebang? I gotta reevaluate some shit. But most importantly, it held reverence for the source material, a concept we'll come back to later in the video. But for now... The games that permeate the period of history around the PS2's heyday created experiences that were new simply because of graphical upgrades. Graphical upgrades pushed the innovation. Nowhere is this better illustrated than with Spider-Man the movie. If you look closely, its gameplay is nearly identical to that found in Spider-Man 2000. Outdoor web-slinging areas scattered with rooftop enemies, indoor stages with a stealth touch, and should you have any desire to run around on the streets of New York, too bad. But the experience looked so much better that it made it all the more visceral. It was, for the time, the best superhero experience money could buy, and Treyarch hadn't even released their most spectacular work to date. 2004's Spider-Man 2 was a true milestone, not just for Spider-Man or licensed games, but for gaming, period. It just came along at the perfect time, at the nexus of so many new methods of game design. And it drew from that nexus, not offering any single aspect of its whole that was unheard of to that point, creating something new with the perfect combination of available elements. And most importantly, building that world around Spider-Man. The whole game let you, finally, and in the best way it had ever been executed, be Spider-Man. Its best and most well-known aspect, however, was the web slinging, which for the first time would require Spider-Man to stick his web to physical objects in the world, so no more web slinging from clouds. It also added a few bonus moves if you felt like wrestling the game's camera into position, including a wall run and a web zip. After a competent but familiar final Gen 6 Spidey game from Treyarch in the form of Ultimate Spider-Man, and a Spider-Man 3 movie tie-in that was a slightly shinier version of the previous movie game, we find such good but not great experiences littering the landscape of Spidey games for the next decade. Web of Shadows, another effort from Treyarch, was released in 2008 and wins my vote for best Spider-Man game of Generation 7. However, the web slinging mechanics that had been used to such effect in Spider-Man 2 were nowhere to be found, and the game just didn't have that holy shit my mind's gonna blow out through my eyeballs impact found in truly amazing video games. 
And then to really drive their now apparent, eh, it's okay, I guess, release model home in 2010, Activision handed the Spider-Man license over to developer Beanox, the kings of not bad. Since 2001, Beanox has released eight original titles, four of which were Spider-Man games. Of those four, two were passable but ultimately lacking when compared to the Silver Age Spidey titles, not that Silver Age, from Neversoft and Treyarch. One didn't represent at all what it means to be Spider-Man, and one, well, one we'll need to review before we can go into any more depth. But one last thought before we crawl up that wall. By lacking, I don't mean bad, and I don't even mean less good than old Spidey titles. When played side by side, the Beanox titles are, in many ways, better games. But that's about as much an accomplishment as The Rock clotheslining a junior varsity high school wrestler. When standing in direct comparison to the old games, Beanox's attempts are better animated, better looking, and generally find Spider-Man doing Spider-Man-y things in a more spider-like way. But they aren't groundbreaking, or spectacular, Spider -Man. or amazing, Spider -Man. and yes, I'm gonna keep doing that. But before we can web this whole thing up, we're gonna need to take a deeper look at The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which we'll do in part two. Spectacularly. Wherever there's a pain, you'll find a Spider-Man.